Hello everyone and welcome to episode 136 of the 10 minute modeling challenge. This week we're going to be switching from one game to another. I'm going to go from Unfair Rampage, we were doing a windmill there last week, and I'm going to switch over to the RTS game Line War and create a new building there because we're needing, we, we need, <laughs> we need an academy there. A lot of stuff has been happening to the game, not only did single player come, Woo! Everyone can play it now. <laughs> Even the people without friends, I nearly said. Shouldn't say that. But people that can't find someone to play against on the internet, uh, they can uh, actually play against an AI now. That's pretty cool. So, uh, we need... Um, now we're working on technologies and we'll be adding a lot of the stuff. For example, let's have a look at the screen here because uh, if I unpause this... What I've been working on today and yesterday is uh, camouflage stuff. So we have something called Pioneer Units now, or Pioneer Troops, Pioneer Core. And if I spawn a few of them here, I'm in uh, like a sandbox mode, we can make it a little bit bigger. And we let's make sure, actually we'll go over here where there's a bit of uh, desert, there's some mountains, some forest and some grass. And check out, if I spawn a few units here, see that they've got like an orange backpack on? And that's because these are uh, the Pioneer Core. And they can entrench faster and they can camouflage their, uh, their little hideouts or their entrenchments. So they dig a lot faster, they create these entrenchments, and when they're done, up slides a little camouflage net. And whether this will be the final uh, mesh version that's going to be ending up in the game, not sure yet because I'm still working on these things. But there's, uh, here's the latest uh, installment of them and you can see as well that it shif shifts over to uh, desert camo here where there's desert and then there's uh, mountain camo and then some plains and in the forest they'll have that as well. And it's a bit of a challenge because you need to be able to make sure that you can see the units good enough. So I've had to, if I go into like this little scene view here you can see, I've had to make a little hole in the top and there's like a little mesh. and. It sways quite a bit and that's on intention at the moment as well because then actually it reveals the unit below it a little bit. And it's only the foot soldiers here that can uh, dig these but if I spawn like, um, let's see, a couple of uh, artillery pieces here, then they can actually go into and let's say uh, switch off the entrenchments for these. So the uh, once the Pioneer Corps here has been digging some uh, some secure and hide, hidden entrenchments, then other units can go to those. And it's a bit ironic now that they actually decided to go to slots where <laughs> there wasn't any entrenchments. But if I spawn a few more, uh, like here, you can see that they'll be able to, and a tank, why not as well. Uh, they'll be able to dig dig down and they don't need to dig down because they have already been created the pioneer core here has already created these but they'll have a hideout here so with these little uh, dig outs that are entrenched and hidden away with some camouflage it'll be a lot more difficult for the enemy to detect those so you'll uh, do a landfall somewhere and you go "Ooh, this looks nice and empty but it's not it's full of people there so let's switch over to today's topic and i'm going to be creating an academy building so it needs to be a little bit high tech looking but not too high tech it's going to be low poly and uh, it has to fit the aesthetics of uh, line war as well so it's going to be very similar and uh, I'm going to be probably I've got um, a scene here where I've got all my buildings and I've enabled uh, here's the factory in the game and here's the town and I also have uh, the uh, here's actually I'm working on some camouflage for the barracks here and uh, the, so I'm going to be creating one new building here today and uh, with Line War we're actually using, we're not using the Infancia Pixpal palette because um, this game was starting to be designed way before I created that more advanced Pixpal palette. So I'm using a very basic one here with just the basic colors which is pretty good as well because then I stick to a specific uh, color pattern for everything in the game. And uh, the only thing that actually shifts a little bit is uh, these two colors here, They're, uh, the, these two blue colors here. They'll actually be redesigned for up to eight different units. They'll be like red, teal, purple, black. It just rotates with different colors. So the only colors I've got to play around with are these at the moment. And then I have to accent it with these two colors. So uh, that will shift in the game. So when you come to the building and it's a red building, then uh, these two colors will be shifted. So that's why, actually, I think I've got... Uh, some sample materials here we can probably look uh, all of them are copies of that one okay never mind i didn't have any red one never mind so let's get started i'm going to put 10 minutes on the clock and then i'm going to be trying to create uh, a, this academy building for line war and again this will probably be a prototype i'll probably have to do a lot of testing and it's going to be a modular building but at least i'll be able to get a prototype together that's the purpose of today's video 
tomorrow as well I'm going to be driving up to uh, a college in uh, on the Sunshine Coast that's going to be a lot of fun because uh, I've got eight new students there that are going to be learning some blender skills so I'm going to be showing them probably low poly character uh, modeling like I did last year so that's going to be a lot of fun I'm going to be heading up there and uh, actually in fact if you're watching the premiere now right when this premiere is done I'm going to jump in the car and drive up there and uh, give them a bit of a a, a lesson I'm going to teach them a lesson <laughs> sounds weird so I was not going to tell them off but I'm not all right let's put uh, some time on the clock here ready steady go and we're off yep it's counting down so tab into edit mode select this shift the sh uh, <laughs> face uh, hold the control key snap it down to there shift e to duplicate it scale it down let's make a similar style here I can probably keep it to that style e to extrude and then shift E to duplicate, uh, move it over here, E to extrude. I'm going to do some different floors, so I'll probably do like this. And then shift E to duplicate that on, scale it down, move it here. Just needs to be looking a little bit nice, like something. <laughs> and then shift E to duplicate, and I think one here as well. There we go. So that's the going to be the foundation. Here I want to do I to inset and scale it down a bit more, E to extrude. And let's create some staircase here. So shift E to duplicate this one, scale on the x-axis, move it into here. And I don't know, I need to find a better way to do stairs, but how, what I tend to do is um, like this. I'll uh, control R and loop cut that on, maybe to there. And then here is the, unfortunately the fastest way, actually I'll hide that face. Shift select, oh, oh well, eight, no, 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 L select the linked, E to extrude, and there we go. And I need to find how much I'm actually extruding. E to extrude 0 0.1. No, that's too much. 0 0.05. E to extrude 0 0.05. That's it. And then here we go. E to extrude 0 0.05. Shift select that on E. 0 0.05. And shift select that on E. 0 0.05. And that's going to be enough, actually. I don't need all of these other ones. So let's just do Alt select on that on. Delete faces and we'll cap this as well alt select there f to, to alt select the link and move it into there and then move it down so i just needed some uh, stairs there uh, should that be a little bit higher yeah i'll actually do alt select the link scale on the z axis bring it up to here and alt h i need to unhide unhide that face again and then actually i'm going to scale them i want them a little bit longer instead then how about this I should do and uh, here as well I'm gonna do these uh, like multi-story I think uh, so I can combine different modules I think that should be good uh, so what I'll do here is I'll do I to inset and E to extrude and then we'll do Control R and then create some windows here Control R here as well and I to inset and I'll do it twice so I get individual E to extrude that on um, that should be all right. We'll do the like dark windows there as well. So I need to put the accents on as well, so we'll be able to differentiate these buildings. And usually I do that on the corners and stuff. So I'm going to do Shift E to duplicate that on, scale it down, bring it into there, and then scale it down again, uh, bringing that down to there. And then let's just put the accent here. So E to extrude, hold the Control key. Okay, I need to actually switch this one to vertex so I can hold the Control key. Slide it up on the blue axis, hold the Control key, snap it to there. I'll select the link and now we'll pick the blue color there so we can I don't mind that it's Z fighting there because I'm going to be uh, fixing those a little bit later on and overlapping them so and here also another thing that I like to do on these buildings is uh, just create a beveled edge here I think uh, either once or twice like that and then we'll do all L select the link and I think uh, yeah shift E to duplicate that on and we'll put uh, the same sort of pillar here as well and move that onto here, bring it up to here, and grab the bottom one there, and pull it down. Oh, I need to pull the whole face down. There you go. And L select the link, and then I think I'm going to be doing just Shift D to duplicate that on, and put the one there as well. That should do. So, and uh, here should we do another platform, I think. So I'll do E to extrude this one, move it into here. And we need to do the multi-story now, so maybe I'll do blue in here as well. And here, E to extrude. I just need accents because you be able, you have to be able to see who who this building belongs to. 
Uh, actually, I'm going to be duplicating this instead of Shift-E to duplicate it. Scale on the Y-axis, E to extrude, and then select these two edges. Control-B to bevel them. Else select the linked and grab that on there. And then now I'm going to do another floor here. So Shift-E to duplicate that on. And maybe rotate Z90. Okay, I need to not be an individual, period. Medium point. Rotate Z at 90 degrees. And that looks a bit uh, funky, but okay, let's move it into there and slide it into here as well. I think I'm going to scale this one up a little bit. It's going to be a bigger floor here for some reason. So there we go. And we need to do some, how am I doing? 451. Okay, so it doesn't make much sense yet, but trust me, it won't <laughs> in the end either, probably. Uh, I need to probably have uh, something more here as well. So. I'll E to extrude this one, and I have to check, uh, make sure that I don't have back faces uh, as well later on. So this is going to be our academy. I, I guess we should put some so like so solar panels on it, and I think I want to make it... Okay, it's quite a bit taller than that one now. That's fine. I don't think I'll be able to do it modular enough to, to have um, uh, all different things for all the different tech. I actually had that idea first that it'd be kind of cool to do that. So every different tech would have its own floor in the building, so you could see. But I'll probably have to differentiate that in a different way. So I'll do Control R here as well, E to extrude this one, and uh, here could be another entrance, maybe a different type of uh, or a ramp, maybe on this one. Control R, I to inset, and move it up. E to extrude it, and then here, Shift E to duplicate this one. Scale. I don't really mind about overlapping geometry either scale y e to extrude else select the linked down and it's just about creating interesting shapes so there's like a a ramp of some sort that's fine and more accents i think so shift e to duplicate we'll put accents here and uh, rotate z 180 oh rotate z 180 and then move it down. And it's important as well that the building goes down in the ground because sometimes you build it on a slope. So this needs to actually keep going down like a foundation like that. That's pretty good. And uh, here I think I'm going to put, uh, I'm not going to put another floor on it, but I'll do I to inset twice so I don't get individual. E to extrude this one down. And then I'm going to put like some sort of a solar panel up here. So scale, scale Z, zero, that's fine. E to extrude and shift E to duplicate. And here, let's just bring these up. These are going to be some solar array type of panels. So let's make them black. It looks high tech. And then we'll do E to extrude that on. And then we'll just put some foundation here. Shift E to duplicate, scale it down, E to extrude. So it goes into there. Bring this one up to here as well. Control R a few times, make it a little bit high tech looking. Don't know why this would make it high tech looking, but actually I'm going to control R a little bit more. Control R, how many? Five. Six. Oh, okay, not 56. Control R, six. How about that? And then I to inset. Okay, that didn't work either. I to inset. Why is it? Oh, I have to hold the control key or something. Shift, Alt. Ah, okay. Period. Have, have I got different. Have, is my scale off here or something? Scale's fine. No. Okay, I'm not sure why it's. Uh, I to inset. It's really wonky finding those there. Okay, I'll just do it a little bit and Alt S to scale. Okay, never mind. Got a funky look. No, I'm not gonna, not gonna have that. So let's just Control Z out of there and scale to select. Okay, we'll do it like that instead then. And then we'll do Shift E to duplicate that on, move it in, E to extrude, scale it down and bring that down. That makes sense or something. <laughs> L L L and scale that one up a little bit and then shift E to duplicate on the x-axis to there and then shift R. That's our little academy thing going there. <laughs> and here I think I want to create the platform as well. I only have one minute to go so shift E to duplicate that. We're going to test them in the game as well to see what it looks like, what needs changing. I think I want to do E to extrude and I think I'm going to put some pillars here, make it a little bit more interesting looking. E to extrude and else select the linked, move it to there. Shift E to duplicate on the X or on the Y axis, maybe to there. And this platform, I want it to be connected to here. 
And this one looks a bit empty, so I'm actually gonna double this one. Move it in a little bit, shift D to duplicate that one, scale Z, and move that in. And then here, we'll do, uh, let's see, how, what do I have on the other, other buildings? I've got some slants and chimneys and stuff. This one's not gonna have chimneys. E to extrude, and let's just accent this whole thing. We need more accents here. And shift select these, darker in here. I usually do that like an ambient occlusion thing fake one there here as well alt select on the edge darker and then slant this one and time's up okay so pretty plain looking and just playing around a little bit with shapes to see what it looks like so i'm gonna do academy let's name it and let's export it into the game just to see what it looks like i'm gonna go file export fbx and selected objects, we'll do apply transform for this one, apply scalings, unit scale, go to the mesh folder and then just call it academy. And then I also need to make fractured version of these and when they're broken, and that should be fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this building, I think, on a different object. So, cause it, oh no, we actually have the academy, so let's, uh, let's try that. So in the game here, academy. I can type. There we go. Because uh, Basantos has already created a placeholder for this, which is kind of great. Uh, so instead of the town here, I'm going to switch this town building to... And we should already have this academy in here, no? Yeah, because I exported it into the folder structure. Let's look in here. And we're going to take away this giant cylinder here, because this was a, a Basantos academy hint. We can take this one away now, because he had to differentiate the, that building just. So we're going to try that. And... Now let's go in the game and have a look at it. It's already ready to go. But it's called town here, but that's okay. And let us play. And it needs to be built close to a town or a city. So here's a town spot. Take, we'll take these territories and build a town. And then we can build the academy. Wrong there, but that's fine. Okay, so we see a few issues here straight away. We have the Z fighting because I've got the platform right on the base here. So I'm probably going to take that platform away. Uh, and also it's uh, too plain, too gray. So I need to add a few things. Maybe we'll zoom in a little bit. And we can update this on the fly. I'll just pause the game now and move it in here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Alt select the linked, or eight select everything. I'm gonna move it down a little bit so it's under the ground instead. And I'm gonna keep the foundation because if we're building in the mountains, it's important to be able to have like a foundation for the building. So let's keep, but I'll lower this down slightly as well. But we can't have these things flying in the air. So let's move this one down to here. I think this will be... It's just so we don't have anything running exactly on the same plane as the ground. That's the important thing. And then another thing we noticed was that it was too, too st uh, static looking. So I'm going to Alt select on this edge. I to inset. Alt S to scale. And let's scale that one down and create... Okay. That's fine. I had something go in there. But let's just change this one to scale zero and then go black there as well let's see okay we've got some broken stuff here all right that's why so i just need to do here then instead i'll go here and click control to there i to inset alt e to extrude long face normals hold the alt key so we can actually get the right proportions it's a little bit difficult to see but sometimes it doesn't uniformly insert inset them move this one in and this one in here as well. And then select these and go pretty black there as well. And then move this one down, move this one up. Okay, what else? This looks way too plain. So we need to create Control R to more interesting looking shapes. Maybe we'll do like this, I to inset and Alt D to extrude along face normals. These could be some research, like they need skylights or something here. So I to inset, 
Alt E to extrude long face normals. I to inset. Alt E to extrude long face normals. These are all different sizes now, that's not so good. So let's do that. Shift E to duplicate it, E to extrude it. Let's do it once. I to inset, E to extrude, hold the Alt key. Does that make any difference? Nope. And L to select the linked, let's get rid of those faces. And then let's select those, color those in the player color. Control R, okay, what do we need to do? L to select the linked. Shift E to duplicate on the Y axis and then to here. We'll leave a gap in between as well. Shift R like that. That looks already a lot more interesting. And maybe we can create a bay on this one. Just this one in particular. I to inset, E to extrude. And then maybe offset this one like this. And then do I to inset and then create like a hole down. Control plus, go dark there. And some pipes would never be wrong, I think. This one is sticking up a little bit too much, so let's go. And I don't really like those foundations that are a little bit offset, so L, select the linked. It will make it a little bit more just to the side there. L, select the linked. L, select the linked. Let's delete that one. Faces, Control R and scale Shift Z, because we only want to scale them on that axis. L, select the linked, maybe a darker gray. And, and let's look on the side view there. Control 3, Shift D, and then Y. And there we go. Two more interesting pillars. And also these look too plain, so I'm gonna do, move it down a little bit, E to extrude, S to scale it, just to bevel that edge a little bit instead. I to inset, and then E to extrude again. And here, this is also looking very unbeveled, so Control B on this one instead. Scroll wheel there. And okay, that's all right. And then we'll make the ceiling darker or the roof. That also also more interesting. Here maybe we need a big pipe. So shift E to duplicate, move it, scale it down, right click, subdivide, edit, and go circle. It's my shortcut to create <laughs> pipes. I know it's stupid. Uh, should have created a cylinder or something. X <laughs> and limited this all. It's just faster to do that way because I've done it so many times. And then we'll do, I need to see from the side, we have to hide this one now. Hide and hide. Oh, not that one. Hide. And then I like to bend the pipes here. It makes it look a little bit more interesting. E to extrude, R to row. Okay, so here's a good way to do pipes, actually. Um, press 1, go into vertex, select shift, shift, <laughs> select that vertex. Shift S, cursor to selected. And then here, I'm going to be moving uh, just the... Uh, this uh, this is actually a shortcut I do to move the <laughs> it's just faster to move the 3d cursor this way e to extrude snap it with the middle mouse button to here select this vert shift s cursor to selected and then delete that vert that's the fastest way I've found to move the 3d cursor to a specific place I know you can go in here and like manually drag the 3d location but when you're in the flow that seems to be working pretty good so and then I'm going to use this one spin and change it to the x-axis and then hold the control key so we snap it up to there 90 degrees but we only need that's too many so i'm going to do like maybe just eight of them that's enough yeah i think so and then click here and then i'm going to shade these smooth so right click shade smooth on that pipe else select the linked e to extrude this one first else select the linked Shift space G and I don't know in a academy building why they need because it's not like an industry uh, industry building so I don't really know why they need, need these but I do think it'll look a little bit more interesting if there are some pipes here shift E to and then repetition is always good so let's put three there and then make them like a much dark color there as well it's just they to research they need uh, this I guess and then th why not this could just go through that makes it more interesting too and I think I'm gonna pull the other ones through as well so we can see them from the side here. I'll select the link to shift D, snap it with the middle mouse button to there and then shift R to re repeat that process. And these look a little bit too plain, but let's have a look in the build uh, in the game to see what this looks like now. So just select it, file, export, FBX, and then tab back into the game and there's our building. 
So it's looking a little bit better. I think it's too small. I think it needs to go a little bit bigger. So select everything and scale everything up. And then make sure that it's, uh, let's see, it's too far in the ground now. So we can move it up to here, probably. Let's try to export this one. And I'm gonna make the foundation here darker as well, like that. Not that you see that one anyway, but on the slopes you will. And let's export it again. So that's a bit better size, I think, for that one. And it looks a bit boring when these arrays are, or like the solar ones are static like that. So I'm gonna rotate these a little bit. Rotate Z. Okay, we need the foundations too, I think. So as if they're, but then again, that, like the whole thing wouldn't rotate. I guess we'll put them on a, like a turntable thing. Shift D to duplicate that on, right click, subdivide and go edit circle and scale it. E to extrude. There we go. It makes sense if this whole thing instead turned X and then do limited dissolve there. Shift E to duplicate that on, E to extrude, and now we'll just L, 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 select all the links here. There we go. And this one. And it rotates Z. There we go. That probably will look a little bit more interesting. And this one, again, uh, this sticks out as if it should be a different color. This platform should probably be darker as well. And I think, I wonder if, uh, for, the, uh, for the game, I actually shaded a lot of stuff smooth, nearly everything. So I think I should uh, step up a lot of this sh smooth shading here. Because if I, if, if I select everything and could do shade smooth, it probably won't look so good here, will it? I'm expecting this to look stupid in the game, so let's try it. Yeah, looks like that's good, then we know. Uh, this is looking too plain. I to inset. Alt E, extrude long face normals. Hold the Alt key. See the difference here? It's a subtle difference, but if I do a little bit more, hold the Alt key. See in the center there? It just, uh, otherwise it'll incorrectly like uh, scale it. So hold the Alt key here, just that'll make it right. Dark to there. And then here, I to inset. Alt E, extrude long face normals. Hold the Alt key. Again, like a dark window. And this is looking way too plain, so time for accents. Shift D to duplicate this one. Scale. Bring in. Actually, I can scale this whole thing up. And Shift D to duplicate X axis, and then three of these. That's good. Scale X. Bring them down a little bit more. And here's uh, probably space for another platform. E to extrude, because there's a lot of research going on in here. Remember, <laughs> scale X, E to extrude. I should probably have some emissive uh, surfaces on the inside here later on. Here we go, control plus G, move it to there. This is also looking way too plain. So maybe thinner accents here. Should we try that? Yep, we should. Shift E to duplicate, scale, Bring it in, E to extrude, bring this one in, L select the link, accent. L select the link, and repetition usually looks good too. So Shift E to duplicate Z axis, Shift E to duplicate Z axis, and we'll put three of them there. But that turned out to be too high. So I'll have to move this one down a bit, and this one down a bit too. Okay. Here, looking too plain on this side, I think. But we can get away with it, maybe, for now. Um, should we put some sort of a pole here? Right-click, subdivide, circle, scale, E to extrude. Actually, maybe we'll do shift Z. Maybe we should have some cylindrical building here. 
that's like integrated into this one. X, and then we'll do limited dissolve. We don't need those extra lines up there. Well, let's flip this one. Rotate Z 180. Make this one a bit wider. And up to here. And then Shift E to duplicate it. E to extrude. Shift E to duplicate. And E to extrude. E to extrude. S to scale. Don't know why this is looking a bit like a lighthouse, but we'll figure out what to do with that. And I to inset, E to extrude, and darker. Okay, now we're starting to get to, like, having a little bit of detail everywhere, I'd say. I to inset, E to extrude. We don't want the accent to go through, so move that on into here. Control plus on the keypad, there, or numpad, and control minus. There we go. Two plane here as well. Maybe a bridge over? Probably not because it would interfere with this one. But I, I mean, we could. Control B. It's like a corridor. That'll work. And then Control R. Okay, before I bevel, I'm going to do the Control R. Control R, Control R. Bevel. And then it doesn't really make sense that those are. Right, but I'll, I'll look. Maybe it makes sense. We'll find out. This is looking too plain as well, but we can sort that out probably. Control R, Control R, Control B. Should we bevel just one there? These two, Control B. Uh, that should work. And these could be like as if it's like glass or something as well. So let's go darker. Maybe. Let's try it. A little bit more. Uh, file. Export. FPX. Export. And bring it into the game. And on pause. Let's have some units walking around here as well. Should we put uh, some war going on here as well? Probably needs... Uh, I mean, I'm okay with it, uh, but it probably needs a little bit more interesting features maybe animate it a little bit why is he just shooting without aiming he needs to aim at it <laughs> that's a little bug that'll get fixed uh, i'm gonna rotate a little bit so let's see academy here we go and rotate Oh yeah, some shadows up there. Is damage already working? Yeah. I've got a material for damage, so it just distorts the polygons and puts uh, like a dark, darker texture on it. So it already works, but the explosion of it is not going to look uh, correct. But the damage already works. I should uh, talk about that. It's basically just a material. If I pause there, and then we'll do the academy. Let's have a look on press there, because that might be interesting to know about. Mesh. It's called town here, but it's not. See here, player structure. So this material, if I double click on it, maybe I can find it. Opening shader editor. I'm actually using, uh, they were on the built-in render pipeline. So this one is using uh, this type of a damage texture and then it just uh, projects it onto three different faces, like a cube projection. And then it uh, uses those cloud textures and it distorts the, uh, uh, the vertex offset here as well. So I'm not gonna go through too much, but it's basically just a slider that offsets the vertices a little bit on the building and then gradually increases uh, these uh, noise textures onto the um, just like projects them onto the building but it works pretty simple that way so it's basically just a slider from if i do here damage here maybe we'll zoom in a little bit more okay not like that so damage zero damage and distort the vertices a little bit on the cloud texture and then also just fade that uh, damage texture in so it's 
saves you having to do the, like when we created the game first i created three different models and switched out the mesh but this is uh, so much easier all right folks there we have it we prototyped ourselves a little academy building for the game line war and we'll see uh, i probably need to modify it quite a bit uh, before the final version ends up in the game at least this is a, a like a rough draft of what it could look like and then um, there's a lot of other stuff that goes into creating this building because I need to be able to I need to animate it inside of Unity. So when it's constructed, it like slides up the different accents and it adds the different floors and it creates a scaffolding on and it usually needs a, like a robot that it looks like it's building it. So that's uh, a lot of work. And I also need to fracture it and have like a destruction model. So when the, the units shoot it and blow it up, it needs to like uh, explode in the right place. But just to get the mesh like roughed out and blocked out and then imported into the game it's uh, pretty simple and straightforward so but then the devil's in the details <laughs> then there's a little extra work added uh, onto that i hope you liked the video give it a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in a video soon again bye for now